From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Lake. It's a big morning of early mornings in LA with incredible great news direct from Santa Monica with your Four Symbols Check update of 2021. An incredible recon will be passing in the house in just a few days because of a major deal done Friday night. In this recording, we'll go over the breaking news as a deal has been reached that the recon will be rubber stamped in a vote that will be very quick in just a few days. I have the latest details in this recording. Price tag 1.75, no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> no one literally knows the price of this recon. And while they don't know, it's not holding up the recon. How is this so? All the latest details. Programs in, programs out. We'll be going over the incredible numbers across the board. Get ready for that pen and paper because across all the clusters of checks, many of them in all these various programs, you will be eligible for about $15,000 as a viewer's channel. Then we'll be turning to Fifth Stimulus and also student loan debt forgiveness. More debt could be forgiven across the board. And then Fifth Stimulus heats up right behind that as we go into a big, bold, beautiful morning direct from Santa Monica. The exciting news is that a recon will be done within a matter of days. Then we go over the Senate and then the Senate adds in to a good bill that's going to get better. The only thing really definitely missing at the moment is the bacon. And with that, I'm excited you're here. The toast is toast and the butter is butter and the cough is brewing. But Bernie needs to take care of the bacon. And this is Early Mornings LA. new beautiful day with an incredible recon that is equally beautiful. The recon will be done within a matter of days and the vote will be happening. No worry about this because it's going to be a rubber stamp vote. How do they do that? I'll explain the latest details and the confusion across the board. The price is right. It's going to be 1.75 or something around there. <laughs> no one really knows and they don't particularly care. They're ordering a particular report. What that report say? I'll explain the latest details in the course direct from Santa Monica. And then we'll be going over the big details of programs in, of programs out. This is where you want to get those pen and paper ready for all these many, many checks across this recon that collectively will pay you at least about $15,000. Then student loan debt, more debt could be forgiven. And this is by executive order. And then we turn to fist stimulus with that cola lift of your benefits across the board. Boy, what a beautiful morning it is with a great bill going to be made better as we head over to the Senate. But first, let's head over to the coast. And this is Early Mornings LA. So subscribe. America's most watched, most comprehensive, and most talked about news channel. LA Light with now 16 hours of shows, 16 shows per day, 39 hours of programming. I'm excited you're here. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers and a YouTube record of 140 million views in a year and a half. There's a reason. You're not going to get the breadth of this coverage anywhere else. Like the video? and consider becoming a member. Let me explain what we're gonna cover in this video because there's a lot in the video. First, I'm gonna go over the broad stroke of each of these clusters of checks, what they are and how much they pay. Then right after the commercial break, we'll come back and we'll go over what happened on Friday with the passage of the roads and bridges and the setting up of the passage of the recon. Then I'll go over what's happening next with the Senate. We'll get our pen and papers out and we'll make notes about the big sums of money of each of these checks, the eligibility, how you get them, what they are, and here we go. Several weeks ago, a subcommittee of the House passed a big recon, and that recon had a series of checks in there, passed in that subcommittee. Now, the vast majority of those checks have survived negotiations, are in the House bill, and will be passed by the House Democrats in a few days. What's important to understand is that if you've been with this channel since spring of this year, early 2021, under third stimulus, the average view of this channel has gotten upwards of about $45,000 of checks. Now, when you look at fourth stimulus, these clusters we're gonna go over right now, when you look at them, they'll broadly pay viewers on average a total across all these checks 
of about $15,000 across all these classes of various programs. The programs include checks that I call hard cold cash, which means it's literally checks in your hand, front end, front end right now in your hand, or back end checks, meaning you have to do something and then you receive it. So let's go over the three clusters and the three add-ons starting right now. Here we go. Cluster number one. Everything in cluster number one passed in a subcommittee is in the recon bill that will pass in the House floor. They are the following. A hazard pay, Pat, and that is the earned income tax credit for one more year. This is a back-end check. Then $4,000 of elder care, believed to be a front-end check, and then $4,000 a year to care for a young child. They got in there also the exciting details of the hard, cold cash check of $550 in your hand for those college students and the Pell's Grant. They got checks in this first cluster for you, hard, cold cash checks, for repair of that home in the low-income community. And then the CTC, hard cold cash checks, one more year, $3,600 or $3,000, depending on the age of the child, low-income family, there you go. And finally, big surprise, is $12,500 for the purchase price of a new electric vehicle. It's currently $7,500. They ramped it up. This is a back-end check. Wow. So all the checks in the first cluster, pass the subcommittee of the house, is in the house floor bill and will be passed in a few days. Stay with me at the commercial break. I'll explain to you the whole voting process and what's happening. But the first add-on, here we go. <laughs> it is proposed at $25,000 for the purchase price of your first home, and it got in there. Not at $25,000, it's going to be another number. We don't know the number just yet, and it still could be modified on the Senate. But wow, this is a game changer. This is hard cold cash. Again, money for the purchase price of your first home. If you're with this video and you're watching, you're taking notes, and you have a question, send me a note on social media, private message me. How about this? I want a clarification. You know it's, you know it's not law yet, but how does this work? We want to hit every nuance we can. People ask me questions about this yesterday. I'll be featured later in this video. Stay with me about this first time home. Let's go to the second clusters of checks. And here we go. We're going to go over each of these clusters of checks, and we're going to go over all the details of what's in these clusters of checks and how they pay across the board. So paid leave and family leave are in there. Then the household tax credit in there. Pre-kindergarten in there and then free community college out, and weatherizing your home out. <laughs> so let's go over the calculations of each of these. First, paid leave and family leave, it is a upfront check. It is a hard cold cash check. It's a lot of money. It's thousands of dollars. Coming up later in this video, stay with me. I'll explain to you how you get it, how much it is, and all the details. Pre kindergarten, upfront check in your hand. Then weatherize your home. Uh, in upfront, in your hand, check. That's especially needed if Joe Manchin drives up in the driveway with that horrible color of a Maserati he drives. <sighs> Just lock the doors. It's Joe in the driveway with that Maserati. There we go. Let's go to the second add on of checks. It's not a hard cold cash check, it's a benefits check. And it will likely float right through Medicare or Medicaid. What is it? It's the Bob Casey provision he wanted added in there. He got it in there. Not this price point, but a little other finger. There we go. Uh, but a little bit less. He wanted $250 billion. He got a little bit less. What is it? It is free home health care for my seniors and people on disabilities. Wow. This is incredible. Got it in there. More about that later in this video. Let's go to the third cluster checks. Let's see what survived from passage in the subcommittee of the House and what's going to be passed on the floor of the house. So here we go across the board. Free school meals for all. Survived. And yes, this is a hard cold cash check. When the kid is in school, free meals. But when not in school, $65 a month per child. Hard cold cash checks. Cheaper prescription medication. Not a check, a covered benefit. More about that later. Immigration reform. In there. Survived, but not a check. Farmers. We don't know. Uh, free internet, we don't know. Clean energy out. Then workers, we don't know. And then Medicare, let me go on camera for that one. That has a lot of provisions. Stay with me later in this video. I'm going to go over a lot of details on this one. The hearing in there, hard cold cash check, we don't know yet. Dental and vision not in there will be added on the Senate, says Bernie. And then the dropping the Medicare, Medicare eligibility age, don't know more about that later. And then the Medicare gap in there. <laughs> That's a lot. I know it's a lot. Let's go to the third add-on. And that third add-on is the MSC IRS stimulus check. What does MSC stand for? Monthly stimulus check or multiple stimulus check. What's important to know is that the situation is very fascinating at the moment. 
The reason why the House members are getting it out of the House saying over the senators is because the senators have a lot to do. They say, I have a lot to do. Bernie and Ron Wyden are in this video going to say, you're going to see their comments. They say, it's a good bill, but I got a lot to do. Send it over. <laughs> Send it over to the Senate. Who are the senators who represent they want to give you a monthly stimulus check? A lot of them. Have you advocated for it today? You should. All of them. Casey, Bob Casey, have you called him? Have you called uh, Chuck Schumer? Have you called Liz Warren? Have you called Bernie Sanders? Have you called uh, Chris Coons? Have you called Ron Wyden? Advocating for a stimulus check. What's important to note is that advocacy is important because when it lands over the Senate, they have a lot to do. We have two opportunities of where they can put things into the recon in the Senate. And understand the second half of this video, you're going to see that they are putting stuff in the recon. That's not without dispute. You want to make sure they get this into the recon as well. Where are their opportunities? First, the Senate Votorama, detailed on this channel a lot over the last few months. The Senate Votorama is a two-day process at the very end of the reconciliation process. It's two days, 40 hours, and they introduce amendments to the recon. The, re the Votorama has historically been a game changer in the country. Senators often receive bills from the House that simply drops the ball, doesn't have a provision in there that was supposed to be in there. In spring of 2020, we saw that under third stimulus. Chuck Schumer and Liz Warren saw an issue. They saw that the president was about to forgive certain student loan debts, but there was a problem. If you forgive a student loan debt, let's say it's 50000 and then you have a problem. And the problem is you have to pay IRS taxes on it. Yeah, $25,000 out of your pocket. You don't have $25,000 of cash to pay to IRS. So Liz Warren and Chuck Schumer put a provision in the Votorama for this that said for third stimulus, the forgiveness of student loan debt is tax-free. And all those students who got their debts forgiven so far, covered later in this video, they did not have to pay taxes on it. That is the benefit of the Votorama. House members didn't even talk about it in their house in their third stimulus. The other opportunity is a subcommittee. What is a subcommittee? When each, both the House and Senate have subcommittees. Normally when we're working House and Senate, same party, same political party, you may not need a subcommittee, but this time it's a little bit different. Bernie's the budget chairman. He's saying there's a lot missing. I need to add a lot of stuff. So you may not want to add stuff in just two days. You may want to put it to a subcommittee and make sure everything is written correctly. That's what I would hope for. That's what you should hope for. And that's what I hope they do. So it's important to understand that advocacy is needed throughout this entire process when we go from House to Senate. Let's read that incredible statement of advocacy that we, uh, the statement that we got from the top Democrat for the recon. The message is so important across the board. The message says they now have in total between congressional and senators' offices received more contacts of advocacy from the LA Purple Power than the number of signatures of the American petition. Everyone's amazed by the outpouring of touching stories from the LA viewers. They now have a better understanding of what people are going through this pandemic. They have heartbreaking stories from the Allied viewers, and they have the voice of the people across the nation in you, Allied, as you have become too loud to be ignored. Very, very kind. This is the chief of staff to the number one senators for the recon. Please continue your encouragement for the continued advocacy. As a professional voice of the people, Allied, you have become, and continue this, Allied, until this becomes law. Absolutely. Pick up that phone and advocate. In the second half of this video, you're going to see why advocating was so important on the House side and will be equally important on the Senate side. A deal is happening that recon will be going to a final vote in a few days, and it's going to pass because of an agreement last night. How did this happen? Friday night. How did this happen? I have the latest details. That LA told you so. A vote on the recon is going to be happening. How soon? All the latest details. The price is right. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1.75, sorta, <laughs> sorta, you know. Uh, don't go on the showcase showdown because you're not going to win because no one particularly knows. But guess what? Has nothing to do with the House members. They're they're kicking it to the Senate. Programs in, programs out. Uh, the price is right. Is that programs out? Uh, um, uh, let's make a deal. Is in. <laughs> in the second half of this video, get that pen paper ready. We're going to go over the big programs that are in this week on. That's going to pay you, on average, about $15,000 across all these clusters of checks and these programs. Student loan debt, more debt can be given, and we're going to go over that as well. Then we turn to the big money for COLA and fifth stimulus right behind that. As we go into a big morning, it's exciting news across the board. I'm excited for you as well. What's important to remember is that the toast is toasting, the butter is buttering, and the recon is going to the finish line, but what's missing is still that darn bacon. Maybe Bernie can take care of the bacon during Votorama. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, 
Then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement's continuing right now on early morning's LA broadcast as the deal's happening on Eureka. Yeah, we got a deal, and that deal hatched on a Friday night. I'll explain the latest details. A vote is happening. And the latest details is that the vote will be a rubber stamp. How did this happen? I'll explain it. Price is right, not particularly, but no one knows what the price is, and it's not causing a problem on the, on the house side. How do they do this? The latest. Then we're going to go over to the programs in, programs out. Get that pen and paper ready because we got a lot of programs that got in that'll pay you a lot of money. Student loan debt forgiveness, more debt could be forgiven across the board. And then we'll be turning to fist stimulus. Boy, here we go. That's we're heading into a jam-packed week of programming. I'm excited you're here. You saw a full schedule of programming yesterday, much the same sort of today. And this is Allied. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers, a YouTube record. 16 shows per day, 39 hours of programming, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The most talked about news channel there is, and I'm excited you found me. Like this video and consider becoming a member. Purple Power, Purple Hawk, or Calcino VIP, the link is under the video. Let's go over right over what happened on Friday that caused some confusion for many people across the board. You know, for even the most sophisticated viewer that's watched every video, if you watched what happened on Friday, it may still be confusing. So let me go over what it is, and I'm going to back it up slowly for even my beginning viewer who may have just found the channel today. We have two bodies of legislation. They have different names. The first one is the roads and bridges, also called infrastructure. There's no money in that for you, never was. The second body of legislation is called reconciliation or recon. The press likes to call it the spending bill. Now, that has your money in it. If that was not confusing enough, the president has used the same words to describe both bodies of legislation. Yeah, shouldn't do that, but he does. He calls them the big build back better programs. Yeah, just confusing term. All right, who are the supporters? Now remember, the recon is passed only by Democrats. We don't need any GOP votes. There are moderate Democrats and they're progressive Democrats. The moderate Democrats want the roads and bridges to pass. The progressive Democrats want the recon to pass. Now here's the issue, is that the moderate Democrats are not against the recon. They were just confused about how much does the recon cost. On Friday night, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, did what she does best. She got two different fractions to come to an agreement, and boy, was it a great agreement. It may not make sense, and I'm going to slow it down for you because it was done. The progressives going into Friday night said to the moderate Democrats, I'm going to block your roads and bridges unless you vote in favor of my recon first, to which the moderate Democrats said the reverse. Unless you allow my roads and bridges to vote first, I'm going to block your recon. Oh, so what do you do if you're Speaker of the House and they're both saying the same uh, statement to each other? Nothing's going to pass if they're both saying it. She came up, Pelosi and Pramila uh, Pal uh, Jalapal, with a brilliant solution. Get the moderate Democrats to raise their hand and vote that they will pass the recon unconditionally as soon as they get a congressional budget report. 
and they will vote on it, and that will pass it. And she got it. She got the moderate Democrats to vote. They will pass the recon by no later than a particular date after they receive a report, despite whatever the report says it. And she got those moderate Democrats to also put it in writing and write it and say it on TV. And there you go. And with that, enough assurances across the board. Let's go over the specifics of what the actual statement says. The moderate Democrats said that they will vote in favor of the reconciliation budget bill upon receipt of the Congressional Budget Office's report no later than the week of November 15th. Now, that's a lot in a single sentence, so let's slow it down. They will vote in favor of the recon unconditionally, mean they will not vote against it. It's done. They're going to rubber stamp it. it. It is now, in essence, functionally passed on a Friday night, but not actually finally passed. They're going to rubber stamp it, vote on it when they receive this report. What is the report? Con- a Congressional Budget Office report. It's a nonpartisan report that has been an issue that would describe how much the recon costs, what the recon pays for, what is paying for the recon, and things like that. So does that mean when they get the report, if they don't like it, they're going to vote against the recon? No. (laughs) The strange thing is the way they phrase this deal is that if you don't like the recon report, you still have to vote in favor of the recon. (laughs) Yeah, uh, Jalapal and Pelosi saw that coming. So they saw that coming a mile away. said, no, I'll let you wait till you get the report. But if you get the report and you don't like it, you still have to vote in favor of the recon. (laughs) Sound crazy? It is, but it works. And they agreed to it. So then when is that vote? The rest of the sentence says no later than the week of November 15th. All right, let's go over that analysis very slowly. It's not on November 15th. It's not the week of November 15th. It's no later than the week of November 15th. So what does it depend upon when they get this report? Well, how quickly can they get this report? Well, it depends on when they requested it. I've been covering this request for this report since almost five days ago. So if they requested earlier this last week, like last Tuesday, it could potentially come early this coming week. And I think they did, but I don't know for certain. If that's the case, then we would have a congressional budget report by earlier this week, and then you know what I'm about to say. In fact, I'm going to say it right now. Get ready to take a nap Thursday afternoon, because you know what Nancy Pelosi loves to do on Thursday nights and midnights. Vote. <clears throat> Other people do different things on Thursday night and at midnight, but Nancy Pelosi just loves to do voting at midnight every Thursday. I just don't know why. She's done that in September, in October, and in November. So Thursday night, get ready. We'll see if that Congressional Budget Office report is out. The actual quote from those moderate Democrats said the following. Let's read it on air. We commit to the bill back. We commit to pass the recon current format with no technical changes as expeditiously when we receive the Congressional Budget Office report no later than the week of November 15th. So there we go. Well, uh, price tag is right? No. (laughs) No one knows what the price tag is. That's what's so screwy. It's really not 1.75. The recon was 1.75 almost a week and a half ago. But since then, three programs were added. We started this last week with me telling you three programs I was predicting would be added to the recon and would become a House a bill and then passed by the House, and that happened. So the three provisions that were added on the House side were paid leave, $200 billion. Okay, then that's 1.95. Yeah, it's 1.95. Uh, cheaper prescription medication, no price tag to that. Well, we're at least $2 trillion now. And then also the money for SALT. There you go. So the other issue was a joint taxation report released Thursday morning said that of that recon at 1.75, 1.45 is paid for, meaning that $500 billion is not paid for for the recon. Yeah, so very fluid situation across the board. Let's go over the programs in, programs out. We're going to do a series of programs, different parts of the second half of this recording. So get that pen and paper ready. I want you to take notes. If you're unclear about something, write it down. Write a question mark for yourself. Remember, not law yet. Send me a private message on social media. Say, I want you to explain something more about this to me. And let's start right with the paid leave. First, what is paid leave? Paid leave under this recon will be staying home because of the birth of a child or staying home because of a household member's illness or your illness. Not COVID, just illness in general. If you look back over the last year, uh, your wife had the flu. You had to stay home for a week. Or your son um, uh, had to go to the doctor because he broke his leg during 
volleyball practice. Yeah. So that is a covered that that is that triggers the situation. Let's say you have the birth of your new child. Yeah, that's covered. So how much does it pay? A fortune. All right, let's do the calculations. And a third stimulus, it was $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year. Split in half. $35,000 on annual salary, $800 a week. Split in half. $15,000 annual salary, $400 a week. How many weeks? Up to four weeks. Whoa. That is thousands of dollars on the high end and at least a thousand plus dollars on the low end. It's a lot of money. And here comes the best news of it. It's for everyone. The eligibility includes all income levels and all types of workers, W-2s and 1099s. Uber driver, wife is pregnant, that's you. Department store worker, W-2, your wife has to go to chemotherapy, that is you. Everyone is covered. And this is hardcore cash checks in your hand. So there you go. That is the first one off the board. We're going to go over a lot of checks in this recording. Stay with me. Take those notes because, boy, I'm very excited. People always ask me, um, I already had to take off because, no, this is not a retroactive. Uh, none of these provisions are retroactive, so they don't go back in time. All right, let's go over the next items of these checks across the board that are in this recon. And we're going to go to SALT. SALT is a second provision that was I was predicting we're going to go in there, and it got in there. A viewer two days ago said, this is very confusing, SALT. Can you explain this again? I am. Let me slow this one down. When you go to do your state tax return, your state tax return, you pay a certain amount of taxes on that state tax return. Then when you go to do your federal tax return the same year, you can deduct how much you paid in state taxes, only up to $10,000 under the Trump 2017 tax code change. The SALT rule in the recon put in there by Gothenheimer and the moderate Democrats helps a lot of people, especially in big states like California, New York, and New Jersey. Now, on your federal tax return, you can not you can put up to $72,500 as a write-off of what you paid in state and local tax deductions. Instead of $10,000, it's now up to $72,500. Wow, incredible great news. They got in there $35 billion for hearing care, likely as either a hard cold cash check or just a covered benefit. $40 billion of job training. That's huge. Here comes another confusing provision. The Medicare gap fix got in there. What is this? All right, you remember that Obamacare was passed. Some Republican governors offered it to their citizens but didn't want to pay for it because they're Republican. So they called those 12 holdout, they call those 12 states holdout states where they offered it but didn't want to pay it. So Raphael Warnock, and who's from Georgia, Senator, and also Claiborne from the Carolinas came up with a great idea, and it's in this recon. It's a workaround plan for those 12 house, how to hold out states which are with Republican governors that they will now offer years of subsidized private insurance to low-income people for very, very cheap for the people in those states. Wow, that's incredible great news. Immigration reform got in there, and people have been asked me for to explain this, so let me go over what's going on. It's not a check. It's not money. It's immigration reform. Now, there is a Fox News report out there that is wrong. Let me tell you what it's saying. It's saying that immigrants are getting $450,000 checks um, in these recons or these legislation or whatever. Let me explain what's going on. During the Trump administration, thousands of families were separated at the border. They estimated in about four or 5,000. Of those people, about 800 were the subjects of lawsuits currently in federal court, many from the ACLU. In those lawsuits, there have been settlement demands by the plaintiffs, and some of those settlement demands are $450,000. The president in response to that said, I'm not paying 450000 but I will settle the cases. If the case is settled, that is not money in the recon. Those cases are just lawsuit settlement cases. It has nothing to do with the recon. The immigration reform is not about those lawsuits, and also the roads and bridges is not about the lawsuits. So there you go. Very, very confusing. They're putting one story with another story. Um, it's totally incorrect. All right, housing assistance. Here we go. Wow, this is exciting. So if you've been with this channel since early 2021, and you have gotten rent and utilities from this channel, which I hope you have. If you haven't, you need to. Then guess what? <laughs> All that money is back under four stimulus. Yeah, you can get another round. We're currently been featuring on this channel third stimulus, the third round. A lot of people have gotten rent under second stimulus in fall 2020. 
than on third stimulus they got in one or two times so far. Well, guess what? Third stimulus had $47 billion for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance. And there's still some money sitting around. And we're now, you know, 11 months into the program. This program will have $150 billion of it. Wow. So that is going to cover you into fall 2022 across the board. Of course, it's a purple hawk. Hawk, hawk. You're going to want to pounce first because it's first come, first serve. Now, that means that everyone who averaged out about $40,000 or $30,000 who got from money from third stimulus, you're going to qualify for that same round of money. Wow. On top of that, there are new checks that are all hard cold, hard, cold cash checks that are in that recon. And that is why this is great recon. Again, across all these clusters of checks, when you look at them so far, it looks like it pays the viewers on channel of this channel on average about 15000 And that is incredible. And But it may go a lot higher. So the other items under, added, added under housing are, of course, the home repairs, the weatherize your home, and the first-time home buyer. All right. So this is why I love my viewers. I love the heart of the question you can go with uh, a particular program. And remember, if it's not, it's not a law, but you want to learn everything about it ahead of time so you sort of prepare for the stuff because we're not far away. So Ryan and Lynn Glenn have been asking really great questions. Ryan asked a great question on Morning's Countdown yesterday. He said, is it just a brick and mortar house or is it also like a mobile house, like a home in a trailer community? Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I would think it would be. Again, it's your first time home purchase. The money would be given in your name to the seller during escrow or given to you during escrow and then you give it to the seller. And it's huge. But is there any requirement of what type of home it is? Uh, it, it's certainly a single family. So it couldn't be, a, you know, it couldn't be an apartment building you can buy as your first time home because that don't count or a duplex or a triplex. No, but um, it looks like it may qualify. But again, these are legislations that can be modified on the Senate side, but we're going to track it. And yeah, keep it coming. Love those great questions. Send me a DM uh, and I will feature it on air. In home healthcare, $150 billion for that across the board. Then here comes hard cold cash checks. $550 checks to my college students who are always on the Pell Grant. Then the big surprise was the climate uh, $550 billion. We thought it was just, you know, production and, and, and factories. No, $12,500 of back end checks for the purchase price of, your, of an electric vehicle. Uh, from a union shop that is GM or Chrysler and Ford. That's what viewer said. Where's Chevy? Uh, Chevy's part of GM, just like the Cadillac. <laughs> there you go. Uh, they got $65 a month hard cold cash checks to parents per child every month that the child is not in school for groceries during those summer months. And when they are in school, it's covered benefit. Wow. Let's go to the third add-on ch of checks, which I said was going to go in this week, and they got it in there. And Boy, this is a big win. It is cheaper prescription medication. On mornings at a light yesterday, I asked viewers, if you receive, if you pay for insulin, can you tell me how much you currently pay on Medicare? Send me a DM. Kathy sent me a, a, a DM. She said she pays $6.50 per prescription for insulin. Mark sent me a DM, says his wife pays $9.50 uh, per, in, for, per insulin. The deal, cheaper prescription medication, Medicare recipients, $35.00. A dose. Instead of Kathy's six fifty and Mark's wife's nine fifty, it's thirty five dollars. It's jaw dropping. It's it's the best thing that could have ever happened in this recon, and it's astronomical. Let me go over what's happening, and let me first start with. <laughs> there was one person I could fire. It's the head of the public relations of the White House because this should have been everywhere on broadcast media Wednesday night, two nights ago. Instead, they ran the the Rome climate stories out of the White House. This was the win. Who got this? Joe Biden. He got this Wednesday night by pestering Kristen Sinema three of three months, and finally she caved and she did it. All right, let me go over what's going on. When Medicare was established decades ago, it said in their charter establishment, you know, over 20 years ago, whatever the pharma companies want to charge you for a medication, you got to pay it. Big Pharma wants to charge you $2,000 for an insulin dose, you got to pay it and then charge Mark's wife nine fifty, And they've done that. And so if you cannot afford it, you don't buy it. And if you can afford it, then you don't pay for something else in the household. It's been horrible. And so 
Every year, as Bernie Sanders, Sanders has tried to solve the problem. And every year, 15 plus lobbyists, very well paid lobbyists, have fought back to keep the status quo on behalf of the big pharma. Over the last few months, Kristen Sinema was the person that was blocking the recon based upon this provision, protecting the status quo. And finally that Wednesday night, Joe Biden did the biggest win of this entire recon, and no one's really giving him credit because he didn't talk about it. He should have talked about it, and the press and the press corps of the White House should have talked about it. He got Kristen Sinema on the phone that Wednesday night, two months ago, and said, Kristen, you got to stop this. You got to come on board on this. This is horrible. And she said yes. And she said, I'm blessing the rest of the recon. He did it. Now, let's go over what it is. All these big medication prices, goodbye. Medicare Part B, Medicare Part D, 20, 30 medications by the year 2028, but we'll start off with about 20 medications, will drop dramatically. Medicare will have the ability to negotiate with Big Pharma, and Big Pharma must negotiate in good faith for cheaper prices across the board. We know that the insulin will be now at $35 a dose, but the medications that are big, cancer and arthritis and diabetes, will be dramatically different. We're not talking about $10 medication. We're talking about the most expensive medication across the board. And Ron Wyden says the first time government will no longer have its hands tied behind its back. Chuck Schumer says... People have had serious illnesses and they have not been able to pay the medication. And I love it what Chuck Schumer says. He says, we're coming back and doing this next year. What? Yeah, he says, we're going to get, we're going to cut more out of this and get it even better. He's going to come back and do this even better next year. That's how you do it. Scott Peter says, it's really good for seniors. Dick Durbin says, it's great. Jan Skalkhouse, he says, I can't believe we got this done despite all the lobbyists across the board. So two provisions of the recon will determine their fate this coming week, potentially, and they are the two provisions at issue with the Senate parliamentarian. The Senate parliamentarian is not a Democrat. She's not a Republican. She's a lifelong federal employee who will determine the fate of whether you can do a reconciliation with those types of laws. And the laws are the one, the immigration reform, and second, paid leave. My prediction uh, immigration reform, I'm predicting, is going out. I don't think it survives in there because she previously said it doesn't go by recon. Paid leave, I don't know. It's 50-50. A lot of people have a lot of opinion whether she's going to rule one way or the other one. All right, that is the start of the process. Now, the next question is, how about the senators? <laughs> well, programs in, programs out. Bernie and the rest of the senators, like Ron Wyden, have said for over a week. There's a lot of stuff missing for this recon. As we go into a new week, guess what? Those gaps are still there. And Senate, Senator Bernie Sanders is chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. So he has the best opportunity at hand. Senate and subcommittee, as soon as he gets the body of legislation from the House. Senate and subcommittee, start working it up and putting those things in there. And then pass in the Senate Budget Committee and send it up to Chuck Schumer. Don't do it by Voterama. Too quick, too messy. Uh, slow it down and get it done correctly. You don't want to just do this in 48 hours. He's asked, are you going to add stuff in there? He says, yes. He says it's the best bill since the 1960s, but has major gaps in there. And I'm glad that there's hearing care in there, but people need dental and glasses. When asked, are you going to add stuff in there? Of course I am. We need dental vision, and it's unconscionable we don't have it in there. We have Ron Wyden says the deal's not done, so the Senate acts. And Ron Wyden says the same thing. He says there's a significant amount of work to do. Chris Coons says there's changes coming. Jalapal, AOC, Omar, Shock says changes would likely come, and then Murphy as well. So let's pull out that pen and paper ready, and let's go over some more numbers of provisions in that recon. You ready for this? Here we go. Pre-kindergarten, three- and four-year-olds, hard cold cash checks, one year. Earn income tax credit, um, one year. Back-end check. The child tax credit, one year. Here, the notes don't line up. My notes show it's $60,000 per household. Maybe it will be the $150,000 per household which some documentation has out there floating. Home health care, likely a covered benefit, not an actual check. Hearing aid, I don't know if it'll be a voucher check or if it'll be just a covered benefit. Then we have a lot of other checks like the $150 billion for the rent, mortgage, repairs of the home, and the purchase price of your first home. The Pell's Grant for the college students, $550 hard cold cash check. The free school meals, $65 per child per month, and then the free school meals when you're in school. Bernie was asked what provisions you're going to add, and he said um, teeth and vision. Uh, wealthiest country in the world, people have no teeth and they don't have vision. So let's go over the analysis and let me go over the calculations of these numbers right now for you. The last time they were 
both in the recon on the house side, they were hard cold cash checks, vouchers. I think they should go by vouchers. Let's go over the provisions of this. First, is Benny going to take care of that lowering the eligibility age for Medicare? I think he will. It's not in there. So I think he's going to still push to get it. I don't know if he will. But the dental vision, I just don't see it not happening. I just think it's so obvious to get in there. The dental was last a $850 hard cold cash check voucher per year per senior on Medicare. Very simple. Not a lot, not enough though. Uh, medical procedures are more than 850. And uh, that's why Bernie wanted it benefits, not a check. And he wanted 10 years, full benefits, full dental. And he went, then he was asking full dental three years. So we'll see where this goes, but I think it's going to be at least a voucher. Then when we look at the prescription eyeglasses, this one's so simple. It doesn't make any sense. Bernie wants an eye exam and eyeglasses per year. Okay, $50 an eye exam, for example, $100 of glasses, done. $150 voucher, put in the mail to the Medicare recipients, done. What's so difficult about it? It's the cheapest of the three provisions, dental, vision, and hearing. So why not do it? It's not complicated. It's so simple. I think this one is uh, very simple to go across in the in the recon. Child care, care services, uh, the CTC. I show it $60,000. I don't show it at one fifty. Then let's go over to clean energy out. Health insurance in there, shorter number of weeks. Housing aid, 175. In-home health care, 100, 200. Wow, there we go. Let's jump over to student loan debt forgiveness. More debt could be forgiven across the board. And that COLA raise. First, let's go over uh, the COLA raise. You're going to get that letter if you haven't already that says your benefits are going up. 5.9% next year. I think I said 3.9% yesterday. Sorry about the mistake. 5.9% next year. But that's not where you're done there yet because you're on then you have this stimulus right behind that. This stimulus would raise your benefits up one time after that and then apply a new benchmark next December. The new benchmark is inflation. And I've been saying it's going to be 2 to 3% next December 2022. That's what Jay Powell said on Capitol Hill this last week. So it means one, two, three steps up in one year. Then they're going to remove the asset cap, remove the income cap, and remove the marriage penalty. Student loan debt forgiveness, more debt could be forgiven by executive order. The president has provoked $10,000 by executive order across the board. Democrats should take it. They don't have to close the door at that number. Just take that for now. The president's already done student loan debt forgiveness for people who became disabled, worked in the nonprofit sector, or the public sector 10 years after graduation. Meantime, if you haven't become a member, what are you doing? The link is under the video. And get that newsletter starting Monday, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It features the big money under first, second, and third stimulus that you can get. And it's important to get that money now because when fourth stimulus becomes law, you're going to get another round of it again. Of course you are. Which brings us into my final, narrative, my final um, part of this video this morning, which is my commentary. Over the last few days, we've seen a lot of interesting verbs, V-E-R-B-S, floating around. Promised, predicted, and said. And let's examine each of those words right now. Promised. I had one person send me a DM, private message the other day, said, whatever happened to that $10,000 of hazard pay promised to me in early 2020? I thought for a second, I didn't know what it meant. Then I realized, oh, the person was referring to Nancy Pelosi's house passed bill called the HEROES Act in 2020 that was going to pay up to $10,000 of hazard pay for essential workers, but the employer would have to apply for it. And then I thought to myself, promised? I guess she didn't hear what happened. So the House bill went from Nancy's house, passed in the House, and then went over to Mitch McConnell. He was then Speaker of the House, speak, uh, Majority Leader of the Senate. He took it and threw it in the garbage can. It was done, gone. Never went, it never went for a vote. So promise is not the right verb to describe the situation. No one promised you 10000 There was an attempt to get it for you. Now, let's use promise in another sentence for legislation. In April 2020, they passed the, uh, the second stimulus and the first stimulus. No, they passed the first stimulus. And the first stimulus had the EIDL grant provision in there, which said that within three days of applying, you are to get a $10,000 EIDL grant uh, for an uh, independent contractor, sole practitioner, or small business owner. That was the law. And people applied for it. And they applied for it. And within three days, they did not get paid. That was a law. They were promised the $10,000. And they did not get the $10,000. So that's an example of where there was a promise. There's actually a law. And they didn't get paid. Let's go to predict it. There's a lot of words to use when you're predicting things. When we're looking at the parliamentarian, predicting. Uh, maybe the immigration reform is going out. Maybe maybe the prediction's wrong. Hard to say because you're guess you're looking at a situation and looking from the outside in. Uh, 
Then let's go to the word um, sad. <clears throat> it's important to look at that word because when legislators say one thing, sometimes people think that the whole rest of the Senate will do exactly what that one legislator says. Or that one House member says this thing, that the whole rest of the House is going to say this thing. For example, Jalapal said, we're not going to vote on the roads and bridges until we vote on the recon first. That's what she said. And she was not the only person who said it. A lot of progressives said it. Nancy said it now and then. But that wasn't everyone in the House who said it. Moderate Democrats said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do the reverse. So there were some people who said that and some people who didn't say that. And why am I bringing that up? Because it's very important that you may have a lot of people who say they want to do a particular program for you. But sometimes, based upon the balance of the number of votes in the House or Senate, it only takes one person to say, no, I'm not going to do that program. And then the program doesn't happen. Case in point. Senators Casey, Coons, Sanders, Warren, Schumer, Wyden have told thousands of viewers over the last few weeks they want to put a monthly IRS stimulus check provision in on the Senate side when it lands in the Senate, the recon. Now, let's say one of them does it. And let's say, or let's say they all do it. Let's say they all do it. And then they present it to the rest of the Democrats, because remember, it's all recon, it's all Democrats. It only takes one Democrat to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that thing. Six of you can say yes, but I'm not doing it. And suddenly it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that Coons didn't want to give you it to you. It doesn't mean that Warren didn't want to give it to you. It means that that one person didn't want to give it to you. And that is where the situation is very fluid. For example, with paid leave, when it comes over to the House, or when it comes over to the Senate, does the Senate parliamentarian going to take it out? She may take it out. And she takes it out. It doesn't mean Nancy didn't want to give you paid leave. She put it in there and the parliamentarian took it out. It doesn't mean Chuck Schumer didn't want to give you pay, pay, permit, uh, paid leave. It means they took it out. It doesn't mean you were promised paid leave. It means it was taken out by the Senate parliamentarian. Moreover, I'm a reporter. I'm here in Los Angeles. I'm reporting what Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and all these people say, do, vote at any moment. And what they say can be undone by someone else. We saw this week when Jalapal wanted to do certain things, Gothenheimer for the moderate Democrats in the House want to do the opposite. So I can read to you what Jalapal says she wants to do, but you can't say I was promised this by Jalapal. No, because there's other people in the House besides Jalapal that can say something other than that. It's sort of like a house at your own home that you may have four brothers and sisters. They all have to agree upon what to do for lunch. And if one of the brothers and sisters says, no, I just don't like that. We can't do that. Then you don't have that particular item for lunch. So there has to be an agreement. And there is that nuance. Finally, when you look forward, it's an incredible reconciliation budget bill. And that budget bill is good and needs to get better. I'll continue to cover all the nuances of what House members and senators say as we head over to the Senate. Senators are going to say a lot of things. One senator is going to say one thing in favor. Another senator is going to say another thing in, against it. So you can't hear the person who says something in favor and say, oh, I'm definitely get it because he promised me to me. No, he just advocated to give it to you. But ultimately, if he, want, if he puts it in there and someone blocks it, it's not his fault. It's the fault of the guy who blocked it. Just like in 2020, when Nancy Pelosi passed in the House a $10,000 hazard pay. She wanted you to have it. She passed it. Mitch McConnell didn't want you to have it. And while it wasn't promised, it's Mitch McConnell who caused you not to have it. As we go into a big day, incredible great news. I'll be here with a full, a, nearly a full slate of programming today. I'm excited for you to join me. Thank you for all your incredible comments. If you have questions about any particular program in this recording, how does this program work? What's the eligibility? Can you explain this details? I have an unusual circumstance. Remember, it's not a law. But I encourage all your very, very sophisticated questions across the board. Because as a purple hawk, 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 you're going to pounce and get that money before anyone else. That's what the spirit of this channel is. And don't let anyone ever take that spirit away. And with that, subscribe. 400,000 subscribers of YouTube record. I want you part of this incredible family. Like this video and consider becoming a member. Coming up next is Morning's Countdown, currently playing on this channel. And then, excuse me, um, uh, Overnight's Crypto, currently playing on this channel. And then Morning's Countdown at 7 a.m. Then join me back live on air at 9 a.m. with Mornings LA. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA.